What do we want to do? Build a robot arm. When do we want to do it? it now, making an arming in cavalry is really fun and easy. You start by clicking this button, and then you make a joke, say, haha, end of video, and then you come back and say, just kidding. And uh, okay, so now that we got that out of the way, let's grab, uh, well, let's collapse this because we don't really need to worry about the rotation uh, controllers there. So we got this end and we have these, this start here. So we'll call this end um, like our wrist and we'll call this start thing here, maybe our shoulder. So we'll put the shoulder up here. And uh, now we got an arm. It's kind of a skinny, small arm. And uh, let, let's beef it up and click on the rubber hose uh go to the length here yes yeah, so now we got a, a long arm and uh, we got the long arm of the law here uh kind of punching the the uh okay let me stop so the um thing that we want to do next is make it a little bit thicker so if i go to basic line and find its stroke we can adjust the stroke so now we have a thicker arm so all right, I didn't want to move the whole thing. Uh, so clicking on this end, and now we can see this looks a little bit better. And you got a few other settings under the, the rubber hose. Let's all double click on that. So you can, um, we saw the length, maybe if it's too long, you could bring this down. So we've got a shorter arm. You also should note that if you want to flip the bend, so if, you, if it bends this way, but you want it to bend the other way, uh, you could animate that even. Uh, just note that if I just hit the keyframes, this is an on and off switch. There's no transition between the two, at least not that I know of. So if you are animating and you want the bend to go the other direction, you're going to have to first get your arm straight. And then once the arm is straight, then you could keyframe from on to off for the flip. And then your... Uh, well, I should also mention a, a little kind of a glitch here is I can't select the controller when it's off the screen. I could click on it uh, and and then I could try to drag it, but I have to go and, and actually I'll alt click on it and change its position so it's on screen. And even if it's partially off screen, I'll still be able to select it. Uh, so let's uh let's try this give her give her i don't want to do that uh give ourselves a little bit more room on screen okay so here the arm is straight and then i would be able to do what i was doing before which is we got the arm straight and we want to go from that bend we just flip and now we could do that so you could hide hide it if you keyframe when the arm is straight and um Okay, so I think we don't want flip. And there's a few other settings to play with, but that's the uh, that's the main ones that you need to worry about. And the next thing is let's make this look a little bit more robotic. And the, the thing we're gonna do is click on the basic line and basic line is a stroke and we can do dashes. So you can see this is your dash, and this is your gap. So the first number is how long you want the dash Second number is how long you want the gap. Uh, and this is going to vary depending on the width of your stroke. Let's just try 55 and 55. All right, let's give a bigger gap. And um, and this is great for sausage arms. And I kind of kind of wish I would have chose a soft sausage character, but I'll stick with the robot. And I'm going to go to the cap style and set that to projecting. And um, so that's that's basically uh, the look we're going for. Maybe go down a little bit. That's a lot. Uh, let's try 83, I'm feeling lucky. Yeah, good. So I got these parts connected, at least when it's bending that much, and then these end parts separate on the outside of the bend. So I like that look. And uh, now I just want a little bit of um, something in between. So let's first, let's um, click on this swatch and uh, click on this stroke color and then add this swatch here. Uh, so we could get uh, some color swatches going. And now I'll click on the basic line 
actually let's all double click on it and uh, click on this outline button here. So I click on that and now you see we have like an inner working going on and I just need to click and drag this down. I gotta be careful, I don't want it to be anywhere in here. So I drag all the way down. It's completely out of this um, hierarchy. You could see that by collapsing that. It's not, it's not part of it. So we're in good shape. Now we just need to make the outline um, thicker. So Alt, double click on it, find its width, and then we'll expand that out. And let's give it a, a color. Oops, that wasn't what I wanted to do. We have to go into, yeah, it's a fill. And we can give this a, and I just hit undo a little too hastily or accidentally, but I'll just go back to the, the, the outline. Alt double click on it so it's not the stroke, it's actually in the in the shape of the outline and increase the width. All right, so now we've we got the look that we're going for. You know what? This might be a little dark. Let's give ourselves a little bit more contrast here. Stroke. Let's make it lighter. And um Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't, but let me see if I could click and drag this. Okay, good, so we got that swatch working. And um, yeah, and this, you'll see there's a little bit of an issue. At certain amounts of bend, I don't know if this is just something that's unavoidable or if it's something that will be fixed in the later um, beta versions or in the final version, but at certain bends, your dash will change and it'll just basically go away. Uh, so. To remedy the issue, you can make a big hand that covers this part of the arm, or it can make like a little bit of a wrist, a hand and a wrist that overlaps. Uh, so let's um, let's actually just, I'll just put it at an angle where it's kind of like flat and I'll start to um, draw a hand shape. So uh, actually I don't really have to draw, I could just Alt click on this sphere and I guess it's called an ellipse shape. It's not three dimensional, so we'll call it a ellipse or a circle. And uh, so this has a fill. Let's give it our swatch that we made before. And uh, I'm just gonna put it as close as I can to um, line up with the pivot point of the controller. And maybe I'll even make it a little bit bigger. So now we got our ellipse shape. I'll double click on that and then I'll just without alt I'll double click on the end and then I've got to make sure I could see the position for both the end and the position for the ellipse shape and let's drag position to position and I could see it, it kind of moved my arm back a little bit I'm trying let's deselect that okay so I, I had this selected that was giving me trouble uh, when I tried to select the uh, end. And uh, so, yeah, this is close to what I want. And I just want to position this hand a little bit better. So I'll, I'll double click on that uh, ellipse shape and change the uh, pivot. So I just want to, like I said, I, I kind of want this to cover as much of that hand as I can uh, so that I don't see that kind of popping out at the end. And once I get it in place, I don't wanna to have to worry about this anymore, at least for now, so I'll lock it. And then I know I, I won't have to accidentally worry about selecting it and I could just move this shape. And so if you like Rock'em Sock'em Robots, uh, you're gonna be in heaven right now because this is, this, I could do this for days. Um, but let's add some, some fingers and you could see it. You know, it pretty much covers that part. You could see the hand looks like it's sliding, but I kind of, and this might sound like, uh, you know, justification of problem, but I kind of like how it slides up and down. It kind of gives the hand almost like a kind of a hydraulic uh, flexibility to it. And um, yeah, so let's go on to the fingers and we'll just do the same thing we did for the arm. Click this button here. And uh, I'll change the color later. Let's collapse some stuff 
So uh, we see if I select one of these parts, I get this little green little arrow and that lets me know this is actually the one that I want and I should start uh, naming these and this is locked. So I need to unlock it and then I could call this one and I could unlock this one. Actually, if it was locked, it was probably locked for a good reason. So let's lock it back again. And then this one we'll call uh, finger and we'll lock that. So now we got to, you know, and like I was saying, if, I, if I'm confused, I could click on one thing and I could see, it'd be nice if this arrow was like a little bit bigger of a highlight so I could see more clearly where it is. But I know that the thing is on this, um, this hierarchy. So then I could just click on it and I could sp expand all these out. So I'll collapse the start and end and I'll say, okay, this is the start. So this is where our finger starts and this is where our finger should end. So let's put it there. Let's flip it. Um, so I got to make sure I'm in the right. I don't just randomly click stuff. So, uh, but this looks like it's rubber hose limb too. So I think I'm safe. Yeah. So that is a finger. It's a really long finger. It's the long finger of the law now. I'll just reduce that length. And if I... If I reduce the length so much that it's straightened out and I keep going, I don't really know how short it's going to be because it's it's got stretchability on. All right, so let's say that's that's a de decent length, a decent length for our finger. And then I'll go into, uh, where was it, the, the shape here. And I'll alt double click that. We want to get some nice sausage fingers in there. So let's go to its... Um, stroke i think yeah so that we can increase and um okay so while we're here we got a swatch that we could click on and um and you probably want to you probably want to put the end inside a little bit because if not you might see like when you bend it you might see uh, some parts that you don't want to see but maybe maybe that's something that you would like but i'm gonna put it inside a little bit and now, um, so uh, this finger we can parent into our um, our hand. So let's let's find the hand and let's name it something that makes sense. Yeah, why not that? So I want the finger inside here. So I just click and drag until I see the. Um, the two lines or basically the rectangle around the hand and let's just test it out and see okay so that looks like it's working the uh, finger is animatable and it's moving with the rest of the rig and then um, so the the nice part about this is uh, so we got our this is now our hand this is our finger I just select this control C control V We've got another finger in here and we can move it and then we can change this. And uh, that is a really nice thing. I don't have to set up the finger from scratch again. So I could select this one, Command C, Command V. It's got the whole thing selected so I can move it all at once. And um, I should be naming these to be um, uh, a good designer and animator, but I'm not. so. I'm going to just leave that. The um, am I not naming it, or am I not a good designer or animator? You're gonna have to make that decision. The uh, ho rubber hose here. I just uh, flip this one, and now we've got a nice rig. These controls, I don't need. I mean, you might want to access them if you want the fingers to be able to slide around. But uh, I don't need extra controllers in my way, so I will do what I talked about before and um, select one of these things. If it's open, I see it's it's going to be highlighted here, so that's good. I could just select that, and um, now I could click on this little, or maybe not. But uh, let's let's undo back. 
Okay, so I select this. I see this is the start. And then if I expand that, we got the start rotation. So I'll hide that and I'll hide that. And I'll go to this one. I see, okay, this is where it is here. I'll expand that and let's turn the eyeballs off. And, um, and here, like I was talking about, let's, let's just do this as an example. If I'm not sure, I could select something. I see, okay, that little green arrow. So that lets me know it's somewhere in this hand group. And then I just expand that and I could see where it is. And that lets you just work really nicely and quickly and efficiently. And now we have a rig. I can move where I want it to start from. I can move the hand and I can move the fingers into it. So here's an issue where I could see what I was telling you not to do. I just did it there, but yeah, I would just need to go back before I start to hide everything and make sure that the uh, the base of the limb is far enough inside the hand where, yeah, so this one, no matter where we put it, we don't get that little bumping out from the end part. So yeah, this is a really fun rig and I'm really I'm really liking rigging in cavalry and I know that they're gonna keep on improving it but so far just right out of the box it's very impressive